so here you have a bookcase, 36 feet of bookshelf, um, and you go like so. I think that it's, it's utterly selfish in the amount of resources that an individual consumes in having five mattresses laid out in their, in their home. And you see a bed, and the bed actually stays in place, and now you can bring the bed down. And again, everything works with your fingertips. The bed is dead. It's just that simple. It's time to use those bedrooms in a much more functional way. With the value of real estate changing so much, resources becoming scarcer and scarcer, the population growing, urbanizing, space is much, much more to premium. So again, you have you know, 36 feet of bookshelf. It's a six foot cabinet with a queen bed. And then you have your desk right here. And then you have a desk. So you have 36 feet of bookshelf, a five and a half foot desk, and a queen bed with a headboard, all in the space of two by six feet. It's just a better utilization of space. So here you have a seven foot desk. Everything remains on the desk, and it's all hydraulically assisted, and your desk goes up and your bed comes down. You know, space saving is a misnomer. It's just a rethinking and reinventing the way space is thought of, because space needs to just be utilized better. Whatever's on the shelf stays on the shelf. And yes, it is a bed, but you don't realize it's a bed. You just put your finger in the shelf and you gently pull on the shelf and down comes the bed. The sofa deconstructs itself and there's your bed. And it's a complete queen size bed. The bed base weighs almost 600 pounds and you lift this with your fingertips. If you put more weight on the shelf, uh, we give you an Allen key and you just turn this and it tightens the tensioning of the system so that uh, the help in, in lifting the bed and the damp and the drop of the bed remains constant so that that 600 pounds just takes a little flip of the fingertip and there it goes and you have your den back. This is a system called the poppy board. This is actually in the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago in the House of the Future. You have a, a seven foot desk. Above the desk you have a chalkboard. On this side, you have three and a half feet of hanging. You can do hanging both sides or shelves both sides, whatever you wish. So you have a seven foot closet, a seven foot desk. And then with a little bit of pressure on the desk, down comes your bed. You have 14 feet of shelves behind the bed. You have your bed, you have your folding headboard as is typical. So you know, now when you look at that second bedroom or that third bedroom, you know, which used to be a closet that got a window installed in it by a developer, now it suddenly becomes a functional bedroom. You put a bed in there and, and it looks like a cell. You know, you put this in there and you have, you know, a great place for a kid that, you know, who crafts and work and, and you just raise the bed and it will go right up. It's like counterweighted, so it almost closes by itself. These things have real style. And the reason that they can be styled is because the technical expertise in the manufacturing is so substantial. Because you have now clearances that are so small, you know, that they just look like the standard clearance of a piece of furniture. So if you're gonna make a cabinet or a cabinet door, it doesn't have that much more reveal than just a regular cabinet door does. So you're not looking at gaping holes and giant clunky hardware and big pieces of overlaid molding trying to hide different things. You're basically looking at the essence of design, the essential of the design, and you're getting all the function without giving up the design. Here you have a nine foot sofa. It's really a five person sofa. There's been other wall beds and Murphy beds in the past, but the problem is that they really didn't do anything other than sit there and do nothing. You know, you had a two foot deep clunker in, the, in your room and you couldn't put anything in front of it. So this recreates the use and reinvention of the space because you have a sofa or you have a desk, a work surface, or you have a bookcase and anything that's on the shelf stays on the shelf. That's fully functional as its own object, as a desk, as a sofa. And then when you bring the bed down, the bed is a real bed. It's fully sprung. It has a sprung base. The cabinet's only 13 inches deep. It's a whole different parameter of what the category was previously thought of. We encounter constantly growing families. Growing means less space, so what do you do? So here you have your bed. And then up here, again with your fingertips, you have another bunk bed. 
It has a full protective barrier. And this cabinet is, is 12 and a quarter inches deep. So it takes up the depth of a bookcase, practically nothing in a room. A ladder that uh, locks in place and is, you know, becomes structural. And the interesting thing about this, one of the very interesting things about this bed is when you remove the ladder and you wish to make the bed, all you have to do is release this lever and the mattress comes down to you and you can make the, mat, make the bed standing on the floor. And just you make the bed and you put it back up and it's locked back in place. Tuck and fold and everything is piston operated, works with your fingertips. And then up here, you have seven feet of storage. The kids want to play. You just fold up the beds and you have your entire room back. So here you have a nice little sofa for a young adult. But maybe you need two guest bedrooms because you've got six kids and 14 grandchildren. But perhaps those bedrooms don't need to be just beds sitting there. So here you have a coffee table and the coffee table turns into a dining table in just a few seconds. You know, the whole point of this furniture is that you occupy or purchase a space and instead of occupying that space in the way it's been prescribed for you, you can determine how that space is to be utilized and occupied. So a dining room, a formal dining room, it's an interesting concept nowadays. You want a dining room table for 10 or 12 people, but you can't dedicate a room that just sits there that you use three times a year or even once a week. You can extend the console from 17 inches to 117 inches. It has five leaves and you can use whatever amount of uh, leaf you want. The leg is adjustable, so depending upon the number of leaves, it's an aluminum bridge essentially and it all just goes back together. Well, here's the table you can see with four leaves in it. This is 97 inches. You know, we, we leave it with four, but you can put your fifth leaf in. 117 inches. Here you have another example of the bed is dead. You have a desk or a dining room table. With your fingertip, you go like so. This releases the bed and it automatically goes down and the bed comes down over the table with your fingertips and there you are. And it's a regular bed. There's no gap between the mattress and the headboard. There's no place for your pillow to fall into. When you're paying $100,000 for the room, $200,000, $300,000 for the room in a highly populated urban market. Now you've captured another room. You have a third room and you've saved yourself $150,000, $200,000. And there's your table.